What's up, everyone? It's me, Artist Till Death. I'm Erica. Um, my co star today is Bowie. He's right there, being a cutie. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit how I make um, the waves on my ocean pieces with resin. So, I went ahead and mixed up my resin, and there's nothing in it other than the resin. And I'm going to start adding my colors. The first color I'm using is not going to focus. Cool, whatever. Bondi from Color Obsession. I'm going to start with just a couple drops because I want this color to be very light. And I will end up adding more drops to get a deeper tone like in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm going to just rough mix my blue. And rough mix is I'm not stirring all of the color in. I want it to be a little bit swirly. And you can do that with some pigments, others not so much because of how they're made. But with tints, you kind of have a little bit more um, leeway with it, I guess. The next color I'm going to use is being difficult, but it is Deep Ocean Blue from color obsession as well. It's going to be my deep water tone. I don't have a pipette in here in it. So I'm going to add just, it's probably three drops. And it's a deep, really dark, super dark blue. It's almost like, it's almost like an indigo. In fact, I may add a drop of Blue Lagoon, if I have it, if I have it handy. Which I do. Blue Lagoon's just a brighter blue. Put a couple drops in there as well. I could have used one or the other, doesn't really matter. You can see on the side of the cup that the difference, wait, where are you? The difference in the blues. Now it's going to look basically black in the cup because I have so much pigment in it. But when I put it on the surface, it'll brighten up to that lighter blue color. That's kind of the amazing thing about having pigments that you can mix and match like the tints from Color Obsession and a lot of the paste that I I have as well. Here it is. You can mix the colors so you can build them. So the white that I'm using today is Angel White by Lorez. I always mix my paste up before I mix them into resin just to make sure that they're really well incorporated together. The type of white that you use is very important with your waves as well as the type of heat and the type of resin you use. All of them work differently together. So you really want to have that combination narrowed down. I carry everything that I'm using on the channel today from the resin to the pigments to the cradle board that I'm using, artisttilldeath.com. It's linked right there. Dun, dun, dun. So you want your white to be opaque. You don't want to be able to see through it at all. And I, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not, but I'm going to mix a little bit of Just Resin Bright Gold. Just in case I decide to add some gold flare, which I probably will because I've already base painted this piece. That's a little bit too much pigment, but it'll be okay. Just add a little bit more resin in that to level it out. Sorry about that, y'all. Bowie likes to sit in his chair when I'm arting. 
So I got him situated over there. This gold is beautiful. Um, the resin I used on this one is just resin diamond coat because it just holds up to the kind of heat I'm about to apply better. Make some room. So before I started recording this video, I spray painted the background of this with a stencil and some gold spray paint from Montana because I wanted to have that like rippling sand look. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to find out together. So my first step is to figure out where my water line is going to be and I've kind of already given myself a guide with the gold spray paint and the white spray paint. I'm just adding clear resin, and this is going to act as a barrier between my white spray, my blue pigment, and my white pigment. Because if I push the white pigment over the blue, it may turn my waves a blue color. I like to figure out my shoreline before I even add any a dot of color right there. Before I add any color pigment, just in case I change my mind on something, which tends to happen from time to time. Cool. I like how that looks. I think. All right. Next, I'm going to add my Bondi blue. I have this color as my light color because to me, it's just perfect for that really close to the shore blue color. And I'm gonna add a couple more drops in and mix that up and that's gonna be my mid-tone blue. How fun is it that you can just add just a tiny bit more and it changes the color. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of colors on your shelf, you can just build as you go. Bowie, you want me? No. Enough. Well, he wanted me to share with you guys that um, he wants more camera time. I think that's what he's saying. Hey, that's enough. Bowie, I think he thinks his dad's home. This is going to be my deep ocean shade. I want just a couple of bits of that color through the rest of it, but not too much. I know it looks hot mess right now, but y'all just hear me. Out. I think I need more of my mid-tone. Chatterbox today, big boy. I appreciate your help. That's enough. I have a shelf behind me that has my big bucket of resin on because I'm running out of room. The struggle. It's real. Super real. For space. Whoop. All right. So I think I am going to add a couple of lines of 
gold just to see if it floats up and does anything cool because why not i've got gold throughout the piece already this would be a perfect piece to experiment on in my opinion I feel like it needs just a little bit more. Not be fine. I'm just gonna do like thin little bits where the raw canvas is. Because I want it to end up under the other colors. And I'm hoping it looks kind of a little bit, I don't know, I'm not sure what I'm shooting for with adding the gold, but if you don't experiment, you'll never know, right? Right, okay. So let's move this color around and just lightly pushing it to cover all of the raw canvas area. trying to push the blue over the areas where I added gold. I want the gold to be under everything else. Ideally. I typically have a line of coasters behind my piece to catch any overflowing resin, but I don't have any preps, so I'm just going to try not to waste too much resin. It's my goal in this moment. All right, now it's time for the white. I'm going to add the white to where it's just touching my sandy area and just barely touching the water area. So I want this line to touch both. And you don't want too thick of a line because then it's going to completely conceal your water. You just want a light frothy wave so it looks realistic-ish. It's okay if you drop some or if some of the line is thicker than others because it's an ocean, it's nature, it's not perfect. It will never be perfect. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's not even. video. Okay. You can also do it this way, but there's less control, so you end up with maybe arguably a little bit too much white down. So just be cautious of that. I'm just making sure there's no gaps. And sometimes I like to add a little bit of a second wave. I'm just dragging some more white through. May not be evident just now, but give me a minute. Okay, so I'm going to be using my platypus style concentrator nozzle today. I guess it's probably called a diffuser. A lot of times I use the wedding cake looking concentrator nozzle. Today I'm going to gonna go with this one. So I'm using my heat full blast all the way hot and 
I'm using 100% airflow. I also have this concentrator nozzle on my website. I just said that that one. Okay, I'm just going to preheat this little bit right here that I'm going to start at. tilt it up just a little bit and where I've already preheated it I'm gonna push that wave back with the platypus attachment take my time don't want to scorch it then preheat the next bit push it back really want to keep your heat gun moving because scorched resin does not a pretty ocean make. Now there's some areas, some areas that need to be broken up a little bit more. So I'm going to take torch and just hit it a little bit to get those areas to disperse. ultra careful with that because it's super easy to scorch resin with a torch. Now there's a little bit of a dark line where my resin used to be before I tilted it all backwards. I'm going to add just some more white up front. In some areas. I'm going to keep a little bit of that dark look because sand does that when water hits it. But I want some really sharp white areas as well. So. You guys will too. Let me bring you in a little bit. I think those layers of the sand turned out nice. I'll probably end up doing a second layer. waves and I'll post a true color video right after this one so thanks for watching you guys hope you learned something hope you had a good time with me and um, I don't know where my mouse is it's probably under a whole bunch of resin anyway y'all thank you for watching and we'll see you guys Oop, there it is uh, next time. You kind of want another. You never know what someone's going through. And always remember, we do the test so you don't have to. Bye.